Good morning, gorgeous. How are you ladies doing this morning? I hope you're all doing fantastic. For those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. I'm Dr. Michelle Daff. And for those of you who are returning, welcome back. Thank you for joining me for another video and session in Feminine Rehab. We're continuing our series, Beauty and Boundaries. And today we're talking about boundaries in the workplace. This is one of those areas where so many of us struggle to maintain our boundaries with our workload, with personal relationships, and just navigating through work relations. So I know this can be one of those areas where we just feel a lot of stress. So I want you to relax, sit back, get something to drink, get something to write with, and let's talk about this. So why are boundaries in the workplace so important? When we go to our job, wherever you work, you want to be productive. You want to be a person who is a great employee, who enjoys her work, and one who knows how to set boundaries and do what serves you and what you are being paid to do. It also helps you to remain professional. When you're in a work environment, no matter what kind of work you do, you're representing a company. Even if that company is yourself and you want to have a certain standard on the way that you behave and the way that you conduct your business. It's also important to have boundaries for social relationships. There is so much drama that happens at work that we just do not have time for and can truly start to impact our personal lives. We also want to have boundaries with maintaining our time and our energy so that we have what it takes to live the other parts of our lives. So that's why it's so important for you to consider whether or not you have boundaries in the workplace. Think about how stressed you are. If you have a lot of resentment about people at work or resentment about things you're being asked to do and start evaluating whether or not you are maintaining your boundaries. So today we're going to talk about some different categories of having boundaries at work. But if you haven't watched my introduction, please take a look at that because that talks about what boundaries mean, the different kinds of boundaries that we all deal with, our physical boundaries, mental boundaries, emotional boundaries, sexual boundaries, and our time management. These are all different areas of boundaries, but today we're talking specifically about work-related boundaries. And the first one is time management. When you are at work, you are expected to be there from a certain time to a certain time. If you work a more loose job in a sense where you don't have structure time, you still have a professional day where you decide when you're on the clock. And having boundaries with your time is going to be essential for productivity and for your own mental health. So if you come in the morning and you say, I want to get to work 30 minutes earlier so I can just sort of ease into my day, put on a little bit of relaxing music, some lotion, pray, and just sort of ease in, that's your time. So if you get there and someone wants to have a conversation with you, that boundary of saying, you know, I would really love to talk about this, but can we chat maybe in another 30 minutes and give yourself the time that you've allotted. Having time management will also help you to get your tasks completed. Let's say you have five things you need to do today. Having boundaries with yourself in the workplace is essential and knowing that if you spend 50 minutes on this, you won't be able to spend the other 30 minutes on that. And knowing how long everything really takes. In our workplaces, sometimes we may underestimate how long a task may take, and then we get frustrated when we can't get everything done in the workday and we end up leaving with work to do at home or having to ask for help or maybe getting reprimanded because we wasted our time. So really being serious about structuring your times throughout the day. And you can do that by having a planner where it has different like timestamps and you can actually write out what you're doing at every single hour and stick to it. Time management is also important in terms of taking time off. When you work a professional job or any job where you know you are working hard, you know, we would love to all have jobs where it's just an absolute joy and we're doing something we would do for free and it doesn't matter if we get paid, right? And essentially, I believe everyone should have a job like that, but in reality, we don't. And even if you do have a job that you absolutely love, you still need breaks. You still need time to be able to detach from having to produce and relax. So having good boundaries with time management also includes taking time out for yourself. Are you taking time for vacations? 
Are you taking mental health days when you've just had enough and you need a break? Those things are allotted to you for a reason. And it's important for you, my love, to have boundaries with yourself and say, I've worked way too much this week. I need a break or I haven't taken a vacation in I don't know how long. I don't need to go to an island, but I do need to take some time to stay home and recharge. And that's okay, it's allotted to you and it's necessary. So having good time management also means managing the time that you take off for yourself. Having good time management boundaries at work also include texting and talking on the phone. If you're someone who maybe is a little bit more social, you may have your phone going off all day. You may have friends and family and whoever you're dating texting you or calling you. And in order for you to get your work done, you need to be able to tell that person, you know, I cannot talk right now. I have to get to work or I will get back to you after I get off. That's having good time management because that time that you're taking away, first of all, is stolen time. You're stealing time from yourself or your employer if you are spending lots of time texting people or on the phone without having work-related conversations or being online shopping and doing things like that. Now, every now and then, you know, this is normal, but when you're going above and beyond, when it's becoming part of your day to be on Amazon or to be shopping for wedding dresses or whatever it is you're doing for hours at a time, then yes, you are moving into stealing at that point. You're stealing your time and you're stealing money. So make sure to be aware of what you're doing so that it doesn't become a habit and a routine that ends up hurting you. Having good time management also sort of leads into some of the other areas I'm gonna talk about today. All of these things really are interconnected with boundaries, but having good time management and being able to get off the clock when it's time to get off the clock and allowing yourself time to have lunches and breaks and being aware of how fast time is moving during the day is going to help you to be able to maintain your boundaries at work. Another important area of having boundaries at work are your social boundaries. And this one is actually probably even more important than your time because it ends up stealing your time. Your social boundaries relate to who you relate to at work, how you relate to them, and what makes you feel comfortable. When it comes to boundaries, it's not only about saying no to things, but it's also about saying yes. It's also about letting people in, being friendly, having new relationships, all of those things are so important. They're wonderful for being a valued employee and it just enriches your life to have a good work environment where you are social. But those social relationships can also cause some serious issues if you do not have boundaries. So if you're someone who enjoys people, what are your boundaries at work? Are you comfortable giving people hugs at work? Is that appropriate for the job that you do? Are you someone who'd rather do a handshake? You know, these are physical boundaries that we want to be very mindful of because we're all different. And maybe normally, if you were at church or at a party or on the street, you would give a person a hug. But in the workplace, you do not want to hug them because of sexual harassment and things of that nature or just giving off the wrong impression, right? So making sure you know what you're comfortable with and being confident to enforce that. So if someone comes in for a hug and you don't feel comfortable, you can say handshake or high five or, you know, maybe give them a side hug, move your shoulder over so you don't feel that your boundaries have been violated. But with every single boundary, it's so important for you to voice it for you to tell the person how you feel and be confident in doing that and knowing that that is your right to be able to be comfortable. And having physical boundaries and limitations in the workplace is very appropriate. Okay, no one should be surprised by this. So even if they are, you have a right to be able to enforce what you feel comfortable doing. Another way you can enforce social boundaries is if you're having a lot of chit chat, a lot of conversations that are stealing your time at work, doing things like having headphones on, okay? We have jobs where sometimes we just need to zone out. A lot of workplaces have gossip 
a very big gossip culture where people are talking about people all day long. And sometimes you just don't want a part in that. If we're talking about just being a more productive and wonderful woman, gossip shouldn't even be part of your lifestyle. You should not even involve yourself in workplace gossip. And I know how hard this is. Sometimes you just get pulled into it. You don't want to have anything to do with it. You don't want the information, but it comes to you. Okay. And this is something you're just going to have to pray about and regulate every single day, just being on guard that you're not interested in gossiping or hearing about drama. But a way that you can zone out is by putting on your headphones and letting people know by looking at you that you're not available to talk. You're not available to talk about your weekend, about your boyfriend, about gossip, about anything that's not work related. And it's really as simple as saying, I really have to get this done taking out your AirPods or your headphones, just letting them know politely, I will get back to you as soon as I can, and being focused on your tasks. Social boundaries also include identifying your workspace. Sometimes we work in places where we're very close. You have people who maybe share a desk with you or share a room with you, and you need to be able to chit chat and talk with them, but you also need to draw a line, a physical boundary of this is my little area, this is where I have my lamp, my photo, my candle, and this is where I just wanna be, and this area is your area. But being able to have that physical location that is a boundary for you physically, but also a social boundary, letting them know this is where I'm going to sit. This is where you're going to sit. And I really need to be able to have a little bit of privacy where I am. Or your voice is a little bit loud where I'm trying to make phone calls and I'm not able to concentrate. This is very difficult when you share spaces. You have to have that sort of confidence and feel brave enough to tell them, this is actually now impacting my work and I need there to be a change. And speaking up for yourself. Now, sometimes we don't feel comfortable doing that. So we have to sort of let management know or let the higher ups know that we're having an issue. But ultimately, as a woman who's growing into herself and growing into her femininity, it's so necessary for you to be brave enough to have these conversations first, for you to be able to tell someone with compassion and with love that whatever they're doing is becoming an issue for you and you just want them to do something differently. It's all about the way that you say it. But being able to do that will help you grow and help you feel confident in knowing that your life is a compilation of all the things that you allow. And you do have the power to say no or to stop something that's bothering you. Social boundaries also include how you spend your breaks. When you have lunch breaks or snack breaks or whatever breaks you have at your job, are you one who wants to have conversations? Do you want people to come into your office or to meet you at your cubicle and chat? Do you want to have lunch with the same person every single day? You may have days where you don't want to have lunch with anyone, where you want to just be alone. Maybe you had a bad day. Maybe you want to read a book. Maybe you want to watch a video. Maybe you just want peace and quiet. That is okay. Even if you have friends in the workplace, it's okay to tell them today I'm going to have lunch by myself and feel confident in doing that. There was a time where I was having a very difficult time doing devotions at home and I told myself, okay, at work, I want to read my Bible and just chill out and eat. I don't want any interruptions. At the time I was pregnant and eating is absolutely necessary when you're pregnant. Okay, I couldn't even skip my lunches like I normally do. But during that time, I would have constant interruptions and I had to get to the point where I made a physical boundary of putting a sign on my door saying I'm unavailable or going to my car sometimes to be completely away and detached and having lunch there and reading my Bible there and getting that time in there. Okay, this was so important to me that I was willing to make the sacrifice of having to walk somewhere or drive somewhere. And you may have to do the same thing. If you're putting up a boundary and it's not being respected because maybe you have a job where there's just so much going on, people constantly need you, they don't respect the boundaries you put up, you might have to remove yourself and create a little bit of distance. That is appropriate, that is necessary, and it's okay. And speaking of people coming into my office and chit-chatting, this was one of the most difficult things for me, setting boundaries in the workplace. 
Okay, I have had struggles with boundaries in every area of my life, but I would say the workplace was one of the most difficult places to enforce it. And I struggled with the social part. Okay, I'm a very open and social person, and my career as a psychologist is one where people think that, you know, I'm always available to talk to. <laughs> it just comes with a job. And I had to get to a point where I had to start putting up physical boundaries and saying with my mouth, I'm sorry, I can't talk right now. Or can you please come later on because I'm working on something. You know, you can sort of give people clues that you're not available by your behavior. Like if someone were to come into my office and want to chat about their weekend in Vegas, sure, I want to hear about your weekend in Vegas. It sounds fun. But I also have a report that I have to get done that's due by four o'clock today and I can't have this conversation. So me telling myself this is a no and also telling them was necessary for me to get my work done. But I got to a point where I started not even wanting to hear about people's weekends. I didn't care about their trips to Vegas. I didn't care about any of that stuff. I just wanted to work. And so I had to put a sign up on my door saying I was unavailable and the sign wasn't being respected. People still would wanna knock or come in. And so they would come in and I would be, uh-huh, 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 just sort of looking down and not making eye contact, showing complete disinterest. And they still didn't get it. They're still talking, they're still lounging and relaxing. And I'm sort of just heating up. I'm getting so angry because I'm like, why doesn't this person get it that I am busy? And so I had to just say it. You know, I would love to hear about this, but right now I have to get this done. And if they were to ask me, oh, it looks like you're busy. I would say, yes, I am busy. Instead of saying, oh, no, it's okay. What is it? Right? This is you not being nice. That word nice. This is not about being nice. This is not about being friendly. It's about being professional and putting your work first. Social relationships are great, but getting your work done is what you're being paid for and what's gonna ultimately get you whatever success you're trying to achieve in your workplace. When it comes to social boundaries, it's also necessary to identify what kind of relationships you wanna have at work. People at work are your coworkers. However, sometimes they end up becoming your friends or your colleagues, and that's wonderful. But you get to decide whether or not you want your coworkers to be friends. How much do you wanna share about your personal life at work? Do you wanna go out with your coworkers after work and get a drink or get some food. That's up to you. And you should never feel that pressure to say yes if you're uncomfortable with that. And it's all about just having your own convictions and saying, oh, that sounds really fun, but I gotta get home. If you have a family, if you have children, you don't wanna be out every single day with your coworkers drinking and laughing and talking about work when you have children or a husband at home waiting to spend time with you. And we can get really caught up in the workplace because we spend so much time there, but those relationships are never as important as your relationship with your family. And they really should always come first, especially if you have children, okay, and they're waiting for you. Yes, it's great to vent and to decompress and get all that work junk off before you get home, but that can be done in your car, that can be done in your office, that can be done at home as soon as you get there. It doesn't always have to be done out at a restaurant with people that you work with. So just being mindful and careful about those boundaries is important, especially knowing that what you share at work or what you do with coworkers can backfire. If you go out with them and you're drinking and you're being loose and something happens, that will and can impact you at work. Or if you share something that is very personal and that becomes the gossip in the office the next day and that ends up becoming office gossip. These things happen all the time because a lot of us let our guard down when it comes to our place of employment. So keeping those boundaries is really important. I know at my job, a lot of times people would wanna follow me on social media or want my phone number, and I was not comfortable with that. I was not comfortable giving out my personal information or letting everyone have my phone number. And I would have to tell people, okay, I'm giving you my cell phone number, which is absolutely not necessary for this job please do not share it with anyone. This is a boundary I'm setting up and I have to let them know because some people don't mind their phone number being shared, but I personally do not want that in the workplace. And that's okay, it just needs to be voiced and it needs to be shared. All of these social things will impact how you end up being at work if you're comfortable there. 
If you feel like people are talking about you, if you feel like you don't have any sort of privacy, these are all things that you can help shape by your personal boundaries. And I do have a number of personal work stories that I can share with you, and I will do that on my podcast. So listen to my podcast, A Feminine Impression, and listen to this episode because I cannot share everything here. The videos will be way too long, but you can always get an extended version of this conversation over at my podcast. So I'll talk a little bit about some areas that sort of became an issue for me in terms of personal boundaries and social relationships on my podcast. But one last area I want to chat quickly about in terms of boundaries in the workplace is your work boundaries, your workload. How much are you taking on as a person? In the workplace, being able to say no is going to be so important. And I know that you want to be a productive citizen. You want to be a great employee. You want to be someone that people look to and say this person just takes on the task. And a lot of times you want to move up. You want to have a better status at work or a bigger paycheck. And so you take on more than you probably need to. But those are not the people who end up moving up. The people who end up moving up or who end up having a great reputation are those who are able to do their jobs well. And it's very difficult to do your job well if you take on too much. So learning when to say, I would love to do this, but I don't have the capacity right now for this. Can this be delegated to someone else for now? And knowing your job description, sometimes if you're a very nice person, things will get put on you. If you're someone who is just a hard worker or is very ambitious, or maybe you're a little bit of a control freak at work, people will start adding to your workload. They'll see that you'll take on things. And so they'll give you things that are not part of your job assignment and learning how to say, mm, learning how to even catch what they're doing is important. Having that spiritual discernment, having that intuition sort of turn on and realizing, I notice that this person keeps giving me things and compliments. Hmm, Michelle, you're so good at talking with the parents. Do you mind calling this parent for me? And it's like, hmm, that's a compliment. Yes, I am good at talking to people. I am good at talking to parents, but this is not my job. It's yours. Being able to say that's not part of my job assignment or being able to say it in your own words is necessary. And you may have to go back to the drawing board. You may have to speak to your supervisor or look at your handbook or you look at your job description and figure out what is part of your job description. What are you supposed to be doing? And if it's not part of your job description, then talking to your boss or your supervisor and letting them know that people are putting something on you that you don't believe is appropriate. Maybe they need to have a meeting and redistribute duties. These things will never come to light if you don't do something about it. I've seen so many people in the same job taking on way more than others, getting paid the same amount. And again, it doesn't affect how they even see you. It just puts a stress on certain people who do not know how to say no. In terms of workload, also having boundaries in terms of when you stop working. If you stop working at a certain time, then stop. You can take it home, but then that is your decision to overload yourself, to overwork yourself. It really becomes a time management issue at the workplace. And if you can't get it done there, then it's a conversation as to whether or not your assignment is appropriate. Do you have too much on your plate? Is this not a reasonable amount of work for the amount of time that you have? And putting up certain boundaries will help you with this. For example, I don't have my work email on my phone because I don't want to get a bunch of emails from work when you know I'm out with my family or on the weekends. I hear so many people telling me that they have so much anxiety on Sunday night because they're going through all of their work emails and there's things that are popping up that they're thinking about for Monday morning. I do not want that. I do not need to have that playing in the background while I'm having fun with my children or my husband, the meeting that I have tomorrow or this incident that's coming up tomorrow that I have to deal with. I want to look at it when I'm on the job and you have a right to do that too. You can decide when you stop picking up the phone. If it's eight o'clock in the evening and someone has a question and they text you, you do not have to respond. And you can let them know the next day, I saw your text, but I stopped looking at my work emails at a certain time. Or I saw your text, but unfortunately, I don't talk about work after I leave. And that's your choice. Are people gonna get upset? Maybe. Are people not gonna like you? Maybe. 
but it doesn't really matter. First of all, you are employed. This is a job. They will replace you. Secondly, your boundaries dictate how much you get done and dictate the quality of your life. Your work life should not be bringing you any illnesses, which for a lot of people, their work is a cause of their illness. Whatever you're battling with, a lot of times came from the stress of work. It should never be that way. And these things come up by you not being able to speak your mind, to say no, to say it's too much, to say someone else needs to do this, and to be able to manage your time. Again, I have more stories and more insight on this on my podcast, A Feminine Impression. So make sure to go there to listen. If you have questions about boundaries at work, if you have stories or examples, please leave a comment and let me know. And we can chat more about what it looks like to have strong boundaries in the workplace. With everything, pray about it. Work can be a very intimidating place. You may have people who are bullying you. You may have a boss that you're afraid of. You may just be afraid in general to speak up out of fear of losing your job. And all of those things are understandable. But living in fear and working through fear will never bring success for you. The Lord is always there to help you with every single thing that you're dealing with. And he does not ever bring fear to you. So fear does not come from God and God will help you through whatever anxiety or whatever stress you're dealing with at the workplace when you bring your concerns to him. And he will give you the wisdom and the structure in terms of how to bring up whatever the issue is and the confidence and peace about whatever decision you decide to make about your job. Every single thing is a season. Things come and they go. It won't be this way forever. And sometimes you do need to be in a different place. Sometimes things are happening because you're not where you're supposed to be. And some of us are in jobs that we were never supposed to be in, or that time ran out a long time ago. And now we need to move on. But in order to ever grow and develop, no matter where you work, even if it's for yourself, having boundaries is necessary. I love you all so much. I'm so thankful that you spent your time here with me. You are doing so well. I'm so thankful that so many of you are growing with the series and you're reflecting on your lives and you're making real changes. And I'm so proud of you. We have a lot more to discuss. Our next video is going to talk about boundaries with your family, specifically with your parents as an adult. And this is an area that I struggled with for a very long time. And I'm very excited to share some tips with you for those of you who struggle with that. Until next time, please support me by visiting my website, findforever.com and purchasing my fragrance 2911. It would mean so much for me to have your support in purchasing a fragrance for yourself or for someone that you love. And visit me on my social media platforms at Dr. Michelle Dath on Instagram and at A Feminine Impression on Instagram. Until next time, my loves, remember that in all things you do, make a feminine impression. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Bye-bye.